Hi, Mark Hayward here, and this is Christine. Hi. And we're going to show you how to do a lube job on a Model A Ford. Just about everything you need to work on a Model A is in the Model A Ford Mechanics Handbook by Les Andrews. If you don't already have this book, you should be sure to get it. We're going to be working out of the service adjustments section, and this has a great chart here for how to know where to do all the lubrication. Uh, it tells you where all the locations are, plus it's got a schedule here of when each particular thing needs to be done. As far as I know, this schedule is the authority on what needs to be done, how and when. So if you do what's in here, you're doing it right. This is a grease gun and this tip is designed to snap on to the grease fittings. So we'll use this for almost all of the lubrication that we do today. I got some nitrile gloves that are a little bit longer than standard gloves because I found that with the regular length ones, I tended to have clean hands and dirty wrists. The quantity column on this page actually refers to the number of grease fittings in a particular location, not the amount of grease to put in. Every fitting gets two squirts of grease from the grease gun, with the exception of the throwout bearing and the rear axle bearing. All right, front spindle is first. We got two fittings. For this fitting, it's hard to reach it depending on your grease gun. If you don't have a flexible nozzle, and mine does not, then you have to turn the wheels in order to have access to this particular fitting. Items one through six on the lubrication chart are all clustered together at the front of the vehicle, so we just did them all at once. The nozzle snaps right onto the grease fitting, and then this one calls for two squirts, and you wanna make sure that you're getting the old dirty grease out. Sometimes you have to do more squirts than it calls for if there's no grease coming out. Ooh, I can do this one too. Yeah, that's some good dirty grease. Up next, the tie rod ends. As Christine was squirting the grease into this one, we couldn't see it coming out anywhere. But it's always good to look carefully before you keep pumping grease in because... Because in this case, there's a giant glob of grease sticking out the back. It's important to keep a lot of rags handy because you're going to need them. We turn the wheels the other way so we can have access to the other end of the tie rod. And this fitting is crammed in underneath the suspension arm. It's a little bit hard to get to. Well, so much for the longer gloves. We had to turn the wheel all the way to the right so we could get to both ends of the drag link that one on the front end is the tough one to get to. Moving on to the back end of the car, there are a few fittings on the rear backing plate. 
a good idea to wipe off fittings before you put fresh grease in. You don't want to force any gunk into the car and there may be some old grease that has squirted out. One thing I've learned working on old cars is it's not always as glamorous and graceful as I expected. Despite it being awkward and difficult at times, my favorite place in the world is to be under my Model A. Oh, that was a lot of work. Yeah. I need gloves that go all the way up to my shoulder. Next up, the U-joint. <laughs> Problem with long hair. <laughs> oh no, That's did you roll over it? Yep. Oh. My car doesn't have this or this, so we'll skip those. I do have the emergency brake cross shaft, number 13, but it looks a little different than the one in the book. There are a bunch of different kinds of water pumps. Some of them require lubrication, some of them only require lubrication on one of the two grease fittings. So find out what you got and make sure you're lubricating it the right way for yours. For mine, only the front grease fitting needs grease. The accelerator control shaft. This takes just a couple drops of regular oil. There are a couple things to do on the distributor. There's one, and there's the other one. The distributor cam requires just one Q-tip full of Vaseline. Number 18 is the engine oil, but we're going to cover that in another video. The horn is my favorite part of the car, so we got to make sure that's working right. For the horn, you just need a couple drops of oil on this felt pad and there's a felt pad in here and there's a felt pad back here. 
and that's it. If you have a generator, there are a couple spots that need oil. I changed my car over to an alternator, so I won't be doing this one. The throwout bearing only needs to be lubricated every 2,000 miles, and it just needs one squirt. To get to it, you take the carpet out and remove this little panel. For the steering box and the transmission, you can use 600 weight oil, as Henry Ford intended, or you can also use this, which by the way is not honey, it's STP oil. This is thick enough that it does the job, and the fact that I put it in a honey bear jar makes it a little easier to get into the places it needs to go. This honey bear is a little messed up. You fill it up until when you stick your finger in the hole, you can feel that there's oil in there. So I've been putting STP in my transmission and my steering box for the entire time I've had my Model A with the Honey Bear. But Christine just came up with a brilliant innovation. Check this out. The Honey Bear nozzle fits on the STP bottle. And the whole reason why I'm using a Honey Bear and not the 600 weight bottle is because that bottle is too long to fit under the car to get the oil into the transmission. But this fits, and I don't have to transfer STP to my stupid melted Honey Bear. I'm going to use this from now on. Awesome! Now it's time to top off the steering box. New STP innovation. Let's try it out. Yeah, that works super good. You just fill this up until it's not going down anymore. And now we'll check the oil level in the differential on the rear axle. So now we've got to pop this plug off and make sure there's enough oil in there. If you don't have the specific tool that's made for it, just using the this thing, what is this thing called? Uh, using a socket wrench without a socket on it will do the job. I just stick my finger in, see if it gets oily. It did. If there wasn't enough, I would put more in. And when you decide that it's dirty, you drain it out of this one and fill it up out of this one once you put this plug back in. When you have to take the wheels off the car, it's a good idea to loosen the nuts before you jack, I don't know what I'm saying here. What am I saying? I forgot to turn the mic on. Oh yeah, this is really good. When you have to take the wheels off the car, make sure you loosen the nuts before you lift the wheel up off the ground. Because that way you've still got some friction to keep it from spinning when you turn the wrench. Anytime you're working on your car, you should keep an eye out for other things that might need to be fixed. All the sparkles in the grease on this wheel bearing are not glitter from some party going on inside the hub. Unfortunately, they are metal flakes that are a sign that the wheel bearing is disintegrating. I'm going to have to order new ones, but for now, I'll just demonstrate how to repack the grease in a wheel bearing using this one. Take some wheel bearing and chassis grease, put a big glob of it on your palm, 
and then you take the edge of the bearing and press it down into the glob of grease. What you're doing here is you're trying to force the grease up in between the two layers of the bearing. And you want to keep doing this, keep pressing down, and forcing grease into the bottom side until you see the grease start to come out of the top of the bearing. You can see here some of the dirty old grease is starting to come out. And you want to do this all the way around. Keep doing it on all sides until you get grease to come out from the entire circumference of the bearing. I've done this wrong before and it's an expensive and annoying mistake to make. So take the time to pack the grease in there properly right now. And the last thing on the lubrication list is the shock absorbers. For the shocks you want to use shock oil and the way you do it is you remove this bolt, look inside to see the level and just fill it up. Well, that's it. That's how you do a lube job on a Model A Ford. So get in there, get your hands greasy, get the job done, and get out there and drive. That's really what the cars are best at. If you like what I'm doing here, please like and subscribe to my channel. It's a big help for me. I'll be doing more Model A maintenance videos in the future, so check them out.